The first thing I want to talk about is this concluding towards the end of Surah An-Nahl. Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Udu ila sabili Rabbik," which is commonly translated, "Invite to the way of your Lord." That's how it's translated typically. Invite to the to the way of your Lord. Bil hikmah, meaning using wisdom, or invite to the way of your Lord wisely. But let's think about this a little more deeply. When you invite someone, inviting someone is an act of friendship, it's an act of kindness, and it's an act of love. You don't invite someone that you hate. And inviting someone cannot happen when you're angry. In other words, you don't go over to someone inviting them to dinner to your house and say, hey, come to my house. You don't do that because that is the guaranteed way of your, your invitation not being accepted. What I'm trying to get at is that the idea of da'wah, the idea of spreading or inviting people to Islam, the idea of da'wah itself is an act of love and courtesy and respect for the person you're giving da'wah to. It cannot be filled with a message of hate. It cannot be filled with a message of judgment. It cannot be a condescending message where you come across as better than the one you're talking to. It cannot do any of those things because if it is, it's just not an invitation. It's just not an invitation. Now, that's the first word that Allah uses, ud'u. And then He says, ila sabili rabbik. Call to the path of your master. Now, I want you to think about this. There's lots to talk about in classical tafsir, but I want to make it very simple for our audience today. It's really easy to understand. When I invite someone, I invite them to my house, yes? I invite them to a conference. I invite them to a retreat. I invite them to this program. I invite them to a restaurant. Meaning, what I'm trying to say is you invite people to a destination. What you do is you invite people to a destination. But you don't call someone and say, hey, I want to invite you to Highway 95. That doesn't make any sense. You don't invite people to a path. You invite people to a what? A destination. That's what makes sense. Now think about what Allah said. Ud'u ila sabili rabbik. Invite people to what? The path of your master, the road of your master. He's not, the invitation is not to the destination. The invitation is to the road, which is unlike any other invitation. When someone, now let me help you understand why that is, because this is profound wisdom in the Quran, profound wisdom in the Quran. When you invite someone to your house, which is a destination, and they don't show up, they don't show up, they're two hours late. Or like me for Jumu'ah today, I was, an, I was an hour late. So if you're late, then people are upset with you because what? You did not make it to the destination. But if you were invited to the path, then it doesn't matter if you've traveled a thousand miles, and it doesn't matter if you've only traveled 10 feet. You have already met your goal because you are where? On the road. You're on the road. In other words, Allah Azza wa Jal has given us a profound gift that to help us understand what da'wah means. You're not asking people to reach the destination of perfection. You're not asking people. We're not expecting from anyone, not from me, not from you. No one is expected to be an absolute, complete, perfect submission to Allah without any mistakes. No, no, no. And people aren't even expected to be at the same level. No. Because this is a path. Some people will make progress faster than others. Some people are going to be way ahead. Some people are going to be behind. Some people are going to move really slowly. And some people are going to move super fast. Some people are just getting started. And their progress is literally an inch a day. Almost feels like they're not making any progress at all. Feels like that. But you know what? All of that, all of that is a success. And if any of those people die, if any of them died on the road, meaning it feels like they were just traveling and they didn't even make it to their destination and their journey came to an end. They died. They are acceptable with Allah because they were on the road. The entire religion of Islam is described as a road. إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim. Think about that. The entire life you spend is a road that you're traveling on. And the point of a road is to make progress. But Allah did not, did not define for us how fast and how quick 
and how much progress quantitatively you're supposed to make because every human being is different. By the way, the journey to Islam, we say some people take their time coming to Islam, but it's not any different even after Islam. Your progress even after coming into Islam takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. There are some Sahaba who go from absolutely against Islam to completely in Allah's submission for Islam. And then there are some other companions of the Prophet ﷺ who struggled. They struggled. It was hard. It wasn't easy for them. It wasn't as, not every Sahabi was Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Not everyone was Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They weren't. People were at different levels. Why do you think the best generation, the best of all generations, when the ayat came about alcohol, when the ayat came about alcohol, they came one time or in stages? They came in stages. Can you imagine? These are the best people, the best believers of all the other generations that will ever come. And the best of all generations, Allah did not impose a drastic change on them collectively, immediately, he didn't expect that it would disappear all of a sudden, even though, even though in the final revelation that has to do with khamr, that has to do with alcohol and wine consumption, Allah Azza wa Jal describes it as rijsum min amal shaitan, an abomination and evil from the work of the devil. Now I want you to think about this. If alcohol <coughs> has always been the work of the devil, even when Allah said, He didn't say it was haram yet. Even then it was evil. Even then. Even when He said, at least don't be drunk when you what? When you pray. Even then it was still the work of who? The devil. But Allah didn't say it yet. It was too much to handle for some people. So Allah was merciful to the believers, even around the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And He allowed them to develop, to mature and eventually gave them the final verdict, this is evil, this is an abomination, you need to stop altogether. What I'm trying to tell you is, nowadays you give da'wah to someone and you expect them to turn around and turn into a sahabi, or if not sahabi, sahabi at least a tabi'i, within 24 hours. Bro, I told you it's haram yesterday, why are you still doing it, bro? Astaghfirullah al azim these people don't even change, man. I already gave them da'wah, they didn't change. I already told them. I gave a whole 20-minute khutbah. And look, nothing changed. Man, can you like go read something about Nuh alayhi salam or something, dude? He has a right to say people don't change. <laughs> you don't have a right to say that. And by the way, it is not your words or my words that change people. It is not our words that change people. It is Allah that changes people. I start from here because this talk is supposed to be a balance between dunya and akhirah. And the first thing I want to share with you is sometimes in our da'wah, we kill the hopes of people. We expect too much from them too quickly. As a matter of fact, when you give someone da'wah, even as a Muslim who is in disobedience to Allah, <coughs> a lot of young guys came to me today and said, my friends in college, they drink. Muslim friends, they drink, they do drugs and they do worse. And I'm trying to give them advice, what do I do? I don't know what to do with these guys. They don't want to come with me to Jumu'ah. They don't want to come with me to the masjid. I try to make them watch a YouTube video, they don't want to hear it. I don't know what to do with them. And you know what I say? You just need to be patient with them and keep giving them a reminder. And don't give up on them. Because you don't know which of your words are going to be planted inside their heart like a seed. And you don't know when that seed Allah will grow it. You don't know. Maybe it'll happen a year from now that the words you said to them click. Maybe it'll happen 10 years from now. Maybe it'll, it'll happen overnight. That is not up to us. Which is why in the very same ayah, when Allah towards the end, in this ayah of da'wah, what does He tell us? He tells us, Inna rabbaka huwa a'lam. Allah knows better who's guided and who's misguided. 